Today, unfortunately, we're gonna be looking at some sick wild tetra fish. Don't go anywhere. What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How's everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Uh, well, this is kind of an unfortunate video to have to make. Uh, the uh, Imperial Tetras, the uh, Nigrosinctus, uh, the Imperial Tetras that I collected in uh, July of last year in Peru, unfortunately have something on them. Uh, there was definitely a little bit of it when they were in the original tank that I had them in, a 20 gallon. They were in that tank for since I got them, I guess, in September. So there was really only a couple of spots of this uh, parasite on the fish. I gave them the trio. They got erythromycin. They've got the general cure with uh, metronidazole and uh, prensiquantil as well as ICX. And then I did two treatments, two courses of levamisole. And uh, it seemed that everything was cleared up is what it seemed like. But it wasn't until I put them into this tank that it just like, got really aggressive and it went, it, I, I didn't even notice it really because of the black water. I didn't notice it until uh, it's a little bit out of control. A lot of the fish have uh, this parasite. Now I really don't want this parasite to spread to the angelfish. For all I know, they're already infected. So at this point, this whole tank is under quarantine as well as the original 20 gallon tank that they've been in uh, since September of last year. So I want to go ahead and pull out one of the very heavily uh, really infected fish and get a little bit of, of a culture sample of this parasite off of the skin off of the outside without really damaging uh, the fish too much and uh, get that under uh, the microscope and we'll take a look at it. So I really don't want to bore you guys with the process of me catching one of these fish. I'm going to go ahead and get that done. We'll get the fish over to the table. I'm going to go ahead and scrape a culture of this parasite. We'll get it back in the water. And then uh, we'll move forward with checking it out on the microscope. Whew. Okay, that was a little rough. These guys are fast. It is a tetra. A disclaimer here though, I am not a veterinarian. I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be. Uh, this is just me trying to save a fish's life, doing what I can for the fish that I keep within my house and in my fish room. I don't recommend anybody to follow exactly what I'm doing here or uh, to, to do as I do. Well guys, I am actually really nervous. I've never done anything like this with a fish. Uh, I have, I, I've worked on a you know swim bladder uh, twice I've worked in a swim bladder, but I've never actually scraped a specimen of some kind of a parasite or fungus or something like that and put it under the microscope. Luckily, I haven't really had to do that. Let me go ahead and get you guys a little bit closer. I'm going to get this fish out here onto a wet paper towel and then cover him up with another wet paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and get this culture sample as quickly as possible, get it onto a microscope slide get this fish back into the water and get it back into a tank. And then we can move forward with the microscope and try to figure out what this parasite is. That was a little bit scary. That worked out. The fish is fine back in the tank. Made a little bit of a mess. This is all pretty much a biohazard right now, to be completely honest. All right, so I don't want to waste too much time. I want to go ahead and get this slide onto the microscope so we can go ahead and check this out before the slide dries up. Uh, we could probably actually see this, uh, this parasite alive. Uh, so I've definitely got a specimen of it. I can see it and it looks Pretty nasty. Okay, so let's take a little closer look here and see what is going on.
Oh wow, that is crazy. That is crazy stuff. That looks like some kind of uh, it almost looks like some kind of a tapeworm. Not really a tapeworm, but some kind of a, a, a worm. A nematode, something like that. Oh man, that is crazy stuff. But this looks like, this is like a fully grown adult worm and then there's these smaller ones that are like the babies, <laughs> so to speak. Oh, these are really crazy. Uh, this, you would think that Levamisol would handle this. Seems like it's got, they have a round head and then they have a tapered off body and it comes to an end, that's the end that just tapers off to a little tiny tail. This is really crazy stuff. It looks like some kind of uh, nematode, some kind of parasitic nematode, some kind of pinworm, something crazy like that. I've never seen anything like this on any fish that I've ever kept. So I really like to figure out what it is. I'm gonna have to hit Google and see uh, see what Google says. So I'm on Google. I've been scrolling around looking for different uh, different stuff. It definitely looks to be some kind of a nematode. Uh, not necessarily a trematode, but definitely an anematode it looks like. But it's definitely some kind of a parasitic uh, worm that's living on the outside of the fish. It might be in the intestines as well. Either way, honestly, the strongest thing that I have right now here in my fish room is going to be Levamisol. It is a goat dewormer, a goat and sheep dewormer. Uh, it's pretty powerful stuff. I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through the process that I go through to uh, prepare the dose and put it in the tank. Okay guys, I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible. Don't wanna overthink this really. Some people really do. Uh, this is Levamisol, Levamisol hydrochloride. You can get this on Amazon. You can get this a lot of different places. I believe uh, Select Aquatics, Greg Sage, I believe he has it available as well. Uh, it's really cool stuff. Uh, it's, it's really powerful stuff. Like I said, it's meant, it's designed to deworm goats and sheep. The basic dosage for this is going to be one teaspoon for every hundred gallons. Now what I'm using here is a magnetic stir. I have a beaker here with a magnet. You see the white magnet inside there. Now that magnet stays inside of the beaker. There's a magnet that spins inside of this machine here and you can actually mix things without having to touch it and deal with it or anything like that. So that's how that deal works. That's nice to have. I use that for pretty much all of my medications. I even use that to mix salt when I'm making my brine shrimp and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and portion out here one teaspoon of Levamisol. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with 200 milliliters of water. That's gonna let me know that 200 milliliters of water, the full beaker here, is going to treat 100 gallons worth of aquarium water. So I can go ahead and just use 100 milliliters of it for the 50 gallon aquarium, save the other for another treatment in two weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the Levamisol into the water. It's actually best that I just do it on the magnetic stir and get that on and let the water current get everything out of the teaspoon. I'm just gonna go ahead and let that stir for a little while and make sure it's completely dissolved. It actually dissolved pretty quickly. I don't see any kind of chunks or anything like that in there. But we'll go ahead and give it a minute to mix and then we'll get this into the aquarium. Well, it is as easy as that. Uh, it's just gonna be a little bit of a process when you're working with something like Levamisol. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some time. Like I said before, we're gonna give it two weeks. Then I'm gonna do a water change, about 50% water change really. And then I'm gonna go ahead and treat with Levamisol again. I'm really curious to know what you guys would do in this situation. Let me know in the comments below what medications you would use to treat these fish. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of my subscribers out there. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share on all of my content. It means so much to me. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.